Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Vince. Slicing through this mess like an electric razor through baby hair. <laughs> We've got Chris. I've got a gun, a knife, and champagne. I, I know how to use one of those three things. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm Kia. Welcome to the show. Did you say, did you, Vince, say like a razy through baby hair? Almost? An electric razor through baby hair. Um, mm-hmm. That probably would have gotten workshop because that's a lot of R sounds that are hard to pronounce. Um, if electric enough. razor through baby hair. I think it's from the Squadron time. Supreme issue, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it, okay. It seemed very weird. One of the former villains. It's a good line. Zero. It's a good line. It was in their danger room I don't, segment. Uh, you know, sometimes I need to start thinking more and more about lines. Other, I just come into this and I say, hi, you guys bring the jokes. I'll just uh, <laughs> I'll just cue you all up here. Uh, OK, welcome. We're reading. Oh, my God. Wedding bells in the air. We've got Superman's big wedding to Lois Lane. Lois and Clark. That's right. 1996 prime 90s. Uh, this is when Lois and Clark, the TV show, was going on, and they were getting married there as well, right? We kind of talked about it's this in the last issue. the same last week. Last episode, little. The same week. Same week. Wow. So, wow. Appara- so the, the, yeah, the, so it was the Lois and Clark TV show was happening, um, and they were romantically entangled. Um, at the same time, DC was going to have Superman 75 be their wedding. Superman 75, mm-hmm. if, you're not, if you don't remember, is the death of Superman. Um, and DC was like... Well, if they're if they're dating or having like a kind of like a moonlighting will they won't they situation on TV, it might be confusing to have them married in the comics. So we'll mm-hmm. push off that storyline, and then that's why uh, Death of Superman got pushed up. I now, say, so we'll kill him now, right? Yeah, that won't be they're confusing. He's years. dead in the comics, but alive on a TV show. That's less confusing than these two couples date. And these two people date, and maybe they get married. Oh, they do get married in the comics. I guess that's where they're going. Um, it would make more sense to me because, like, I remember seeing like cartoons of like Spider Man and MJ dating. I'm like, yeah, because they're married in the comics. This is logically where yeah. it's going. Duh. Well, you know, I think nowadays we've seen that audiences can handle multiple different universes existing. Like that idea is fine. I think right. it's it's widely accepted. Um, but maybe it wasn't back then. Like I don't. I'm maybe maybe it would have been tougher. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Lois don't and know. Clark was my. I, I was looking back to it. I was actually watched a bit of the uh, the Lois and Clark wedding. Um, it was it, this was my first introduction to Superman. Was that TV show? Um, wow. And I think it was the only live action superhero stuff going on at that time, other than the Batman movies. So, like, I think from like ninety yeah. three to ninety six, like it was my superhero show. So I really, really liked it. You know, that's interesting. Thinking back to that era where there weren't very many, like, live action hero stuff going on. Anytime there was something, it was, like, a big deal. It was always, like, a pilot that never got picked or up. Really like, you remember the Generation like X pilot? The Generation X pilot that. or seeing yeah. – I remember seeing, we like, those – We reviewed that for, I, our, for our podcast. Oh. Yeah? Oh, man. Or, like, the Spider-Man with things? the little eye holes poked in his costume. I remember seeing that, like, at Blockbuster <laughs> or my video shop. Like those kind of things, or spy, or Captain America with the motorcycle helmet. I remember. So there was stuff going on, but like not stuff right. that I was interested in. Or and Hulk had been over for a decade. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, Wonder yes. Woman. Wonder Woman had been in the late seventies. Hulk it was in the late seventies, and there really wasn't a lot of new stuff. And I mean, it's funny because like Image really beat uh, some of the other companies to the punch because like Spawn had a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nightman had a TV show in the 90s that people probably don't remember. <laughs> it was right there with like I remember, Renegade. I remember Dayman Fighter of the Nightman. I don't remember Nightman. I remember Darkman. Um, yeah, Darkman. That, that was not an Image character. I think that was an original character. I think it might have been too, that. directed by Sam Raimi. Uh, but this is all to say that um, DC was going to, uh, they, Lois and Clark was going to have a wedding in the near the end of their season three and dc was like well if y'all are not going to be ahead of us we should probably get them married too even though they were broken up in the comics um and we need a little more lead time so they yeah, lois, lois has apparently been written out of the comic for like a year at this point really? which again yeah, i don't know how this is clearer strange. I don't, yeah. She's coming back from the Middle East. This is the issue that's reintroducing her. That's so weird yeah. to me. Um, it's like the beginning of the. I I remember being like, wait a minute, they're announcing the wedding at the beginning of this issue. Like that would have been such a great cliffhanger to put at the end of something. Be like, okay, great, the wedding issue is coming up next. Like the way this thing starts, it definitely fills in a lot of info. But I'm like, what is it? What a strange choice. 
I don't know. There's a lot of, yeah, go ahead. It's really, okay. So I guess we'll just get into the comic um, and then we'll catch up with like Lois and Clark a little later. Um, But basically the comic starts with Lois in a wedding dress with page one. And I'm like, this makes sense to me. I've come off the stands. I have not read any Superman for a year, um, Mm -hmm. but I'm ready to read this monumental issue. Um, and even that's what we're doing right now. Like, I don't know what Superman's status is at this point. I think, like, he died within the last couple of years. Right. They had the rain. We do Superman learn stuff. a yeah. little bit. Like, it does fill in enough information about what's been going on, which I appreciate. But yeah. it, what, But it's also a weird, I mean, I, I guess we'll get into it as we go on. Uh, after, I think, final night, uh, the sun got reset. Uh, of course, a normal thing to happen. Uh, <laughs> and Superman lost his powers. Right. And and Perry White oh. is yeah, Perry White's got cancer, so Superman's managing or Clark Kent is managing editor of the Daily Planet. Um and single, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I really like the beginning because Lois is in a wedding dress, but then she's having a fake out wedding, like a a kangaroo court wedding to some terrorist. Um right, some... named Naga, and he's got like his whole crew on the plane as well. And she's like she's she's pretending to marry him. And this I... guy, like, he's talking this guy's dumb. Right? <laughs> It is very silly. He's like, like, as you you know, you can't testify against your husband. It's like, really, buddy? That's what you're hanging your hat on. (laughs) Can you not testify against your husband? Are you not obligated to testify against your husband? That's that's the standard in most places, Vince, is yes, you don't have to testify. But you could. It's not that you can't. (laughs) Okay. You could. Because, again, Um, think about how many marriages end in divorce. Of course you can testify against someone you're divorced from. Or, like, in a domestic abuse situation, like, and you can't testify against your spouse. That seems weird, right? Yes, of course. Like, yeah, it's it's a, uh, you know, a privilege. You can waive it like like self-incrimination. But... Uh, yes. So he's very stupid. He's, he thinks that, I don't know where they got this great wedding dress for. It doesn't make a lot of sense. They're like on this plane. Yeah. They got like this nice cake on the plane too and everything. I'm like, how did that, how did that happen? Um, and this guy, he like, nice cake. It's also holding a bunch of heroin in it. Right. And that's how they're getting across the plane. Right. This is very complicated. It was like the first few pages of this comic are not what I expected at all. Uh, where this guy is like, I've captured you and like, I'm going to hurt you or whatever, but you had such a great idea to marry me instead. That's great. It was also a great idea of yours to get my whole crew up on this plane so they could all see it happen. Wonderful idea. Thanks so much, my new bride, who I'm sure is deeply in love with me and isn't going to turn on me. I mean, you need Uh, witnesses, Kia. This is just common sense. (laughs) It is. I'm on board with this, though. I really am. I'm like, I get to see Lois, like, beating up a bunch of drug lords in a wedding dress and smearing cake on their face. This is silly, stupid. I'm on board. Um, Yeah, I love it. I love when uh, Crocodile Dundee with his, this is a knife, uh, (laughs) attacks her and, and like, you know, stabs her, like, train or whatever. And she's like, that's not my legs. (laughs) It's a... It's like I did find it. I had to slightly suspend my belief that Lois Lane could like beat up an entire cartel on a plane with a champagne bottle. I she's got some experience, I guess, in the superhero field. And, and uh, it, as as Colin Farrell, uh, hitman in in Bruce said, that's a that's a deadly weapon. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's I, true. It's I, true. I, I like how though it also like is showing that Lois is more on equal footing and not just like the girlfriend marrying super right. Um, right. And right. so that's how they're establishing. I do have. I have some ideas about this, but I'll I'll, I'll touch on those later here. Um, we, we should also say that this issue is written by every active Superman oh, writer yeah. at the time, because um, I think they were rotating of, on four yeah. or five issues a month, um, depending on the week. And I think they said, although I can't imagine, it was every notable Superman artist who was alive at the time who drew it. So like the cover mm-hmm. and like the opening page is drawn by John Byrne, who we just covered last week. Um, and then this is uh, partially Carrie, Carrie Gamble and Murphy Anderson and also Gil Kane and Bob McLeod for the uh, – Bob McLeod maybe, I guess, for the for the wedding sequence before we get mm-hmm. into Stuart Eminem, who we know from a ton of Marvel comics um, for the next season. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm going to be able um, to double back and keep track of all these artists, but um, – I definitely not. Yeah, I did. But Dickie and, G um, but is we here. Mention all the, we Kitson. should mention all the writers yeah. real quick And Kurt, well. Kurt Swan, who had you know uh, drawn the book for like, what, 25 years, something right. like that, from like Very 1960 close. to 1980, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. Uh, he he yeah. does five pages here. He's he's very old at this point, yeah. but he, he does uh, the flashback to the – I will get to it. But, yeah, but the, the the writers didn't like it. It isn't broken down in terms of who wrote what. Uh, it's just five different writers who I guess collaborated on the whole thing. Uh, Dan Jurgens, Carl Kessel, David Michelin, Louise Simonson, and Roger Stern. 
Um, and I think I kind of like that. The whole book does feel very seamless. I, there were yes. times when I forgot that it had multiple artists. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This one is a little bit more jarring. Like, this this crook looks very old-timey. And I was like, okay, I, I see that now. Yeah, I, yeah, well, yeah. there's a couple where Lois goes from, like, being very hot to looking very, I, I don't know, very strange looking. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> true. It's sometimes hard to keep track of, like, who is this supposed to be um, between mm-hmm. scenes? But I think it works pretty seamlessly. Other's issues are way better than this writer's issues. Um Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Clark is running the the planet at this time, um, and you know he's I guess been looking for her forever, and like everyone, I need you to find me, Lois. And they're like, wow, this guy's like take, really taken over us, and you know, blah blah. blah. And um, he's you know he's sad because like oh she broke off the engagement, he still has the ring, all this. This sort is of a wedding stuff. issue, so I'm very confused. Right, I, mean, I just I bought like, this thought... off the newsstand because I heard it was yeah. a big issue. Um, yeah, well, but what is this I'm like, nonsense? Okay. Um, yeah, and also he has a um, ponytail. Yeah. Right, that that was the most confusing aspect of the whole thing. Ponytail, Bruce. Like, I mean, uh, Clark. His, his Clark Kent persona uh, has you know a ponytail, so that no one can tell. Like, oh, Clark Kent's a professional, and then they say Superman, and they're like, oh, he's a cool party dude. He's got a mullet. Uh, but she storms into the office. Although the, I do like the whole planet staff, like kind of murmuring around, like, oh my god, she, she's back. And um, Clark, like, knocks over a glass. I, I like this as well, where Clark is a bumbling idiot, and she's like, oh, people don't know it's because you just, like, don't know your own strength. I, I, I like that. Um, but he cuts himself. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. Clark, you're powerless. And, um, you know, they bond over it. She's, she finds the ring, and, you know, they, they, uh, they're all, like, kissy smoochy, let's get married. And the planet staff sees it and sees it and it's all cute. And then, you know, from here on out, it's like wedding planning and the wedding issue and everything. This is where I feel like like that could have been a cliffhanger right there. Like, OK, they're getting married now. They're together. The next issue is going to be all the wedding stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, something, could, something felt off. You could have made it like a little four P four page uh, trade or four issue trade because it is like 90 pages. Um, yeah. You could have done yeah, that. Yeah, this is this is 18 pages. This could easily be like 25, and then you, it would be a standalone issue. And I think it's kind right. of the strongest as far as story. The rest of it is a lot of like, what's going on with this? What's going yeah, on I mean, with this? Yeah, there, I mean, it's a victory yeah. lap. There's a whole page where they spend talking about crockpots, and I'm like, this seems like a like a lot of well, so, pages. But but I do say so, I like this first part. I think for as like much as we're talking about like with the sun going out and Clark losing his powers and then being broken up and him having a, a, a mullet. Like, I think that all of that is pretty established pretty well in these 20 pages considering I haven't read really, Superman really. for the last year before the several few years before yeah. this. I think it does a pretty yeah. good job. Um, it yeah. really does. Um, and I, yeah, to touch on that, the rest of it does start to become very mundane wedding kind of stuff, be, especially yeah. because Superman is depowered. There, there's definitely elements where they touch on that, which we'll talk about. But I did like how much it focused on a lot of the side characters in and out, in and out of their personal lives. It's not um, Brainiac trying to th- ruin the wedding and that being the focus right. of, the, of the issue. <laughs> right. And hilarious. at first I definitely was like, I kind of wanted something like that. Right. Uh, I'm reading this and I'm like, no, it doesn't feel like anything's happening. But by the end, I was like, you know what? I actually really did like the way that it. It focused on the human aspect. It's of more it. of a Clark and Lois issue than it is right. a Superman issue. Right, yes. right. And yeah, it's really, and I, you know, like I said, it is a victory lap. There's a bunch of cameos mm-hmm. and like minor characters. And like for us, for me, I'm just like, oh, I kind of know who that is. Uh, like right, there Lori, was a lot of that. Lori sure. Laughlin or whatever, the, the mermaid. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a mermaid. <laughs> they don't actually <laughs> say that, but she's, she's very, she has a pro mermaid agenda. <laughs> Pro mermaid agenda, huh? Oh, don't they all? Those mermaids. <laughs> um, all right. Lo- Lois so, gets really mad when the catering people put out seafood, which I don't know. She's a mermaid. She's seen fish eat fish before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like that they still touch on Clark being a big muscular guy, though, even though he's just like depowered. Uh, he tears his dad's old tux on accident. And, you know, yeah. Ma-, Ma Kent is fine with it. But it is like, oh, yeah, this is a big, strong, muscly dude, even if he yeah, doesn't I, have his I, power. I was really, really hoping that would happen because when I saw, you know, his dad try to give him a jacket, I was like, there is no way that will even come close to fitting. <laughs> Mm-hmm. like superman uh, is like a 60 like his his chest is enormous yeah um lois here is um her her segments honestly are the most mundane and real 
like it's it's a regular wedding shower. It's a regular this, and it's a lot of regular types of stuff. Her dad is a real grump and a half. This guy sucks. He is not ready to give his daughter away to Clark freaking Kent. What did he ever do? Uh, he is just like mad about everything. And there's a, a scene with him when the like the women are getting ready to have a bridal shower. And he's like, oh, I don't want to go hang out with the men or whatever. And so, so you're going to stick around for the bridal shower. And he's like panicking. Like, well, <laughs> I got to get out of here. It's <laughs> the weirdest. Like, that's a gross exaggeration of just like the macho man. I, I can't be seen anywhere near a bridal shower kind of thing. It's so strange. Yeah, um, yeah, he's definitely he's not even a sitcom dad. He's a sitcom like a grandpa. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is the uh, the part where I'm like, okay, the lowest stuff is so mundane, and there is a very like, oh, everyone's getting her crock pots and kitchen stuff, and there's like a joke about it where it's not really a joke, but you can see it on Lois's face where she's like, I don't give a shit about any of this stuff. God damn it. And I'm kind of like, part of me feels like. You're inject. You're starting to inject more and more of the Superman stuff around here. Like this would have been a great time to kind of inject. Like, hey, this is what I was just doing. I was taking down a cartel with, with a champagne bottle. Like, part of me is like, hey, give us more of that juxtaposition of showing both of them doing cool stuff at the same time. I don't know. Like on That's the same page, page, like split panels or alternate right. panels something or something. Like that. Yeah. But- because we also do get this Superman. Okay, so so Lois is also. I'm kind of probably jumping around at some point. We'll make sure to circle back on all this stuff. But Lois at one point is going to pick up a marriage license, runs into a friend, um, who says Maggie Sawyer from Gotham Central. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Maggie Sawyer. Is she I was, also, I didn't is, write she also a lot is she Batwoman's girlfriend? Ex girlfriend. Ex girlfriend. Because she, does she date Renee Montoya? Uh, no. I I think she's dated basically every gay <laughs> character, okay. but uh, yeah, happy to she, see Maggie. And she I'm is also again just like Lori is pro mermaid. She's like I don't understand men. That's like her one line, and you're like, yeah, we get it. If you're a fan <laughs> of the character, you're like, oh, okay, she's coded as gay. There's nothing beyond that other than she's just a single woman who's Lois's friend. Was she? she <laughs> so she wasn't out at this time. I'm assuming. I don't think so. But it, and she talks about her Metropolis past. So. Right. Yeah, I believe she and, was in the Superman cartoon a lot as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, her and then the detective that looked like Jack Kirby were partners on that show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so Lois runs into her, and Lois is like, oh, we've been looking for houses, blah, blah, blah. And, and Maggie Sawyer says, oh, I know this great place over here that's, like, super cheap because – uh, there was a fire in it and Superman helped stop it. And they're like, basically they do a whole flashback sequence of Superman stopping this thing. Like when he had his powers and the building cleared out and they thought there was kryptonite in there, but Superman rushed in heroically anyways. And there wasn't kryptonite, you know, it, it, it's not particularly important in the grand scheme of things, but I think they were like, we need to see some Superman action in this issue. So this is how we're going to do it. Well, and, and, and the second I looked at this, I'm like, this is probably the Kurt Swan segment. Um, <laughs> Which it, it absolutely is. is. I don't know when Kurt Swan passed away. Um, June 1996. So he was dead at wow. this point. See, that's like, like, because we read that Action Comics 1000 and they had new stuff from Kurt Swan, which was like a weird flashback action sequence that just was like four or five pages that kind of got shoehorned mm-hmm. into Action Comics 1000. I wonder if this was the same way because it's the only Superman it, it, action. Yeah, almost like assuredly. Yeah. 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 This this was clearly like a fill in book or whatever uh, that. They just had never used before, and we're like, "Well, let's just use it now." What the hell? It's baffling yeah. to me that you just have five pages of a comic artist's like work that never published, um, <laughs> like several pages. Because yeah. it's very it weird. It's a lot of time um, to do this kind of stuff. But okay. Um, but I uh, well, that section it does stick out like a sore thumb a little bit, which is why I was like thinking, well, if you put the lowest stuff up against this, it doesn't feel as much like it sticks out, you know? But right. I, I also don't like I, I don't like the idea of a wedding taking this long this short of a time to plan. We talked about this in the what if right. when Stacy and Peter Parker yeah. got married kind of issue a couple episodes ago. It's like, why does this have to be done in like a week? Like and also I don't mm-hmm. I, I really don't understand how Clark and Lois are doing very well for themselves in Metropolis. Why do they need to find a new place to live? And one of them's just not moving into the other place's pl- person's place. Um, yeah, I don't right? know. I don't know. Um, the, at least, I, at least I really, for like a year. I mean, you're fine. You're, you're not pregnant. Like you, you don't need a new place right away. Yeah, mm-hmm. and at this stage, like I mean, you know, like I, I think the challenge is we got married. Uh, me and Kimberly got married in our late twenties. 
we were already established with the bulk of our appliances and stuff like these kind of showers are very difficult to shop for people in their twenties, late twenties and beyond. Mm -hmm. Cause they're already established. You have all your appliances. You have pretty much like, everything. You we need. already live. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, but I, I do get the sense like, you know, and then I, I really like Lois's character in this. I get the sense that she does not have a ton of appliances. And Clark is kind of dopey. So why would he have like wine glasses yeah. and stuff? Yeah. And he doesn't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Clark, Clark, you know, he doesn't need, you know, a lot of uh, fancy shit because he can just fly to wherever and immediately get resources. <laughs> Although I guess now he can't. Now he's walking to Whole Foods like a sucker. <laughs> wow. Superman shopping and like he fills his uh, basket up too much and he's like, oh, my God, this is heavy now. Well, or he used to be like ambitious and he'd be like, well, I can go to Whole Foods to get this, but then I can go across town to go get this at this meat market. Um, and then he's like, man, that's going to take me all fucking day I was now. like, <laughs> I'll pay the extra <laughs> dollar. I'm paying the extra dollar. I'm going to get here, go home. I'm done. <laughs> Versus when he's Superman, he's just like flying to like some, you know, he's flying to Brazil for plantains. <laughs> wow, this guy, he's got, he's got no more access to prime ingredients. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> needs to get that Amazon prime. All right. So, um, well, yeah, you can go to the Amazon and, and. Prime uh, is another superhero he can meet there. Uh, so. <laughs> I like how okay, this segment okay. so has now to... advertised two different Amazon-owned grocery stores. It's almost like so. Uh, so yeah. yeah. So around right. this time, again, I, I'm loving Lois. She's great. Uh, around this time, I start to turn on Superman a little bit or Clark because he sees like a, a minor robbery and he's like, "Well, I'm wearing my Superman clothes, my costume under my clothes. I can stop this robbery." Uh, you know, anyway, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, why are you wearing that? <laughs> You're not Superman. It makes so no good. sense. He's so stupid. <sighs> He's so dumb. But he does risk his life to, like, you know, he and he bluffs, and the the, the creep uh, who's robbing the store buys it. And, you know, then he goes running, and Maxima shows up. I remember Maxima from the cartoon, where she's, like, a Kryptonian as well, who's like, You're the only other Kryptonian. We have to be life partners. Let's yeah. be, Let's get married and rule the humans. Basically uh, the same version of, uh, is it Titania, the uh, the Marvel version of this character where she wanted to have sex with the thing all the time, where she's like, you're the manliest man, we have to be together. <laughs> Basically. And then she finds out, like, wait a minute, you don't have powers? Oh my god, I almost married a human. <clears throat> and she flies away. Humiliating. <laughs> Humiliating, yeah. <laughs> um, what else is there? There's a few other little moments we've made. Uh, Jimmy Olsen feels very sad that Superman has not chosen him to do the photography for his wedding. And he's like, oh man, I thought we were friends. Um, I really love Superman. this. I, I love this because they're, they're at this party here. Um, and this guy, this motorcyclist, biker guy is just like, oh man, this bar is closed for a private party. Where the fuck am I going to shoot pool? And they bleep out the fuck, but it's definitely in there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then where oh, the crap? And then, like this barroom scene. <sighs> it's the weirdest bar fight, but, like during a wedding party. But also the bar is like, yeah, this happens all the time. No one's gonna get hurt. Because it, and it's, Clark's is not it, even there. Clark's it, not there. Is it Bippo whose bar it is? Yes. Superman's favorite fan. Uh, Yes, he's he's oh. also in the cartoon a little. He's the Popeye looking guy in the cartoon. We've, he showed up in Superman uh, fights Muhammad Ali, and he's showed up a few times. He also showed up to place sure. bets on the fights in Marvel versus DC. Um. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that recurring character, friend of the show, Bippo. Um, <laughs> this is so, like a uh, six page segment, though. Five it's a, it, it lasts for a while. I was like, "Is this still going?" <laughs> between some of the be between some of the wedding shower scenes and this wedding party scene, there was a lot of like, "What is happening here?" It, um, and it's, uh, okay, it, again, it's so strange because the the book kind of wants to. Uh, explore like jimmy's like you know uh he's feeling bad i guess he's ostracized all his friends because he works for like a geraldo type show now yeah uh so he's on tv and is not working with the daily planet mm -hmm, he's like mm -hmm. oh they're all mad at me and then he's like jealous of pete campbell a character that i only know from smallville uh yeah, same. and so he's like, oh, he's he's known Clark longer. But then it's like the book is afraid that it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are these uh, guys showing feelings of some kind? We better better have some kind of comic fight to distract them. Yeah, um, there's a few. OK, so what if we kind of skipped over? There's some little things I wrote where Superman got the ring inscribed uh, with like, you know, from Clark to Lois or whatever. And hey, can you put like the, the Superman S in there, please? And the guy's like, sure, buddy. But why? He's like. 
well, I guess you could say I'm her Superman. <laughs> um, and then he adjusts his glasses, too. I'm like, stupid move, buddy. <laughs> Like, like um, Lois there's... Lane is well known enough in this universe that she dated Superman, though, independent of Clark, right? Or is I, that, I, or I is that been... they were officially a couple, or if people okay. just know that like she had a thing for Superman. Okay, but still, that's enough, though. Like, yeah, we know you're getting married to Lois Lane, dude. That's kind of weird. Yeah, like <laughs> um... put 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 her ex's initials in that in that ring. <laughs> like, it, it's a private joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get it. You'll get it. Um. There's wedding dress scenes where Lois is picking a wedding dress and like some of these wedding dresses I thought are pretty nice and they don't really explain why they don't work too well. Maybe they're just too revealing. They're like, oh, yeah. you can't. And yeah, like, okay. I, I got that sense. It's also it's, yeah. it's the 90s, so it's kind of different. But yeah, she goes from like a really, you know, old timey conservative like fairy tale look that she mocks to like skimpier and skimpier things. And her mom is getting like progressively horrified. But again, as as three men, we're like, yeah, these are fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so what else great. is there? Yeah, let me she make looks sure. Great. Let me she see looks... if I, I need to check. I, I I watched the episode where they did get married. I'm not sure if it's the same dress in both. It is not. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and and super... I just got to this part in the book as we're keeping up. It's uh, Paul Ryan is the culprit. You know, no, not to shame him. Uh, he, uh, she gets Lois gets lingerie, and she looks about sixty years old. Uh, it's the worst drawing of Lois in the whole issue. <laughs> this, this is this is the good Paul Ryan who did work on both the John Byrne. Uh, I think he inked the West Coast Adventures we just talked about last episode, as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. as he's done quite a few Squadron Supreme issues, including the Squadron right. Supreme like OGN that takes place. After Squadron Supreme. By the way, stay yes, tuned. He's, for he's, done, he's done about three yep. issues. Oh, of Squadron and Supreme. how do I always forget to mention that we're talking about Squadron Supreme afterwards? All right, we're on to number 11. This, you know the drill. It'll be great. And this is the good Paul Ryan who sadly passed away yes. recently. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we've already said all that uh, in a previous episode. But I will say that's, he gets the uh, dishonorable mention for worst drawing of Lois this issue. That's Lois? That looks like gotta be Lois's mom. There's too much lines on her. It should yeah, be what... Lois's mom, but it's not took care of. They're just out and about. They've escaped the cops. They are and, yeah, looking they're to just get in back. a convenient alley. And Superman finds them, but also one of who's the guy who like interrupts the the party at the bar? Who's this creep? I don't remember. It's some other creep that's also a creep. I don't know. Um, but Superman, meanwhile, says, "Yeah, this worked great for me when I tried to take down that other hoodlum. I'm going to take down the whole gang of people that Lois took down." And um, Superman doesn't do great at it. He's he, he does know, not have a champagne it. bottle. There's your problem. No, he needed he does, a champagne. He bottle. does take his cape off to to mask somebody. Yeah, he's like, I got to play this smart, and he's like, I'm gonna hold back so I don't hurt you guys. Um, and ever they're like, oh, I guess the stories about him aren't quite as true about how strong he is. Thankfully, Batman shows up, uh, which I actually really like the scene. I think the whole Batman and Superman stuff is some of my favorite stuff here. This art was um, done done by Run Friends. Um, I'm not sure mm-hmm. if he was a the, the Superman artist at the time, but it looks like who would have been the Superman artist at the time based on the art. He, yeah, so. he's one of them. He, he's uh, a very, uh, very good, like classic artist. He has very clean lines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but Superman's, t- I mean, Batman's telling him, OK, you know, the, all the other superheroes know that you're going to be off on a secret mission. Hey, I know you don't have power. Also, I'm going to be your landlord. You're going to you're going to live in a building that Bruce Wayne owns. Cool. Cool. Um, but I no, like that like, he, he had to go through this weird, you know, circuitous route. I guess he's like you said, Vince. He's hard to shop for. <laughs> what do you get for the man who has everything? An apartment. But I'm, <laughs> an apartment. Yeah. yeah. An apartment in uh, a formerly burned building. Uh, you know. No, this was that was no, this the was nice a different one. one. Okay, this yeah, is yeah, the nice one. He got him the nice one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was like a waiting list of like twenty people, and and Bruce Wayne, like, I guess, ruined all of their credit scores to uh, <laughs> make sure that Lois got it. This was the I, this I was, was say, the apartment with the nice fireplace, right? Yes. Is yeah. that it? I feel like they spent more time stressing the bad apartment that I forgot there even was a good apartment. So I, I was with you a little bit there, Vince. I was like, what, which apartment? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lois does have a throwaway line at the end of that story that's like, this just makes me wish I went to that other apartment more. <laughs> Where you're like, yeah. oh, right, the one she wants. Right. Because that whole thing was just the shaggy dogs. I mean, again, Kurt Swan is dead. It's not his fault. They just used right. his right. old work and tried to make it into something, but it doesn't quite work. Yeah, so the heroes all fly directly overhead which is sweet but also doesn't make a ton of sense none of the rest of them talk to superman 
Like, right. See, look, they're all on patrol right now. <laughs> That's so you can go on I mean, your honeymoon um, to Hawaii. Like <laughs> I know, and and Batman says he's like, look, I told Superman, you know, I I said you're you're going on an assignment off planet or whatever, so that's why you're, they're filling in. But it's like, you know, I feel like Wonder Woman, Steel, some of these characters, you they probably know who you are. You could probably tell yeah, them too. It's probably fine. Um, so I like the the little line afterwards where where Clark says, you know, that Bruce is a pretty good guy. Wish I could have invited him to my bachelor party. I'm like, oh, that is sweet. They're like, you know, you kind of need a hero bachelor party and like a, a normie life bachelor party. Um, See, that would have been a fun way to like introduce a low level villain is if, you know, mm-hmm. they were there with, uh, you know, like the jerk Green Lantern and some, you know, some other people and just had somebody like try to rob them or something where, you know, there's just like 10 superheroes sitting in a bar like that would be funny instead of the bar great, fight yeah. we, we do get. Yeah. Um, so Jimmy Olsen, he's been upset about not being the photographer. He gets asked to be the best man. Ah, oh, Jimmy, you're all worried about nothing. You are Superman's pal. Um, there's a pre-party. There's like another pre-party. I, I really started to get lost between all the bar scenes and the party scenes and like the, the shower scenes. And they all felt like they ran together into like not really meaning a lot independently. But on the, on the whole, they were just like vehicles to keep seeing all the minor characters. Yeah, like it's I said, like wedding, the weddings are weird, and there, yeah. and there's you know there's some callback. I guess uh, Jimmy thought that the mermaid had done some sort of crime, and so there's a moment of awkwardness where he's like, "Sorry, I was wrong about that," and she's like, "I I can read your mind, and I know you're being sincere, so I accept your apology." And he's like, "That was weird." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, there is what else? Dad? Okay, we haven't spent too much time talking about Lois's dad. He is like he's the through line of this whole book is him being a jerk to yeah. to Clark. He's kind For of the primary different... antagonist of this story. He really is. He really is. Um, like, does Lex Luthor even appear? Is he yes. like? Hmm, there's I... there's he one does. page. There's one page. Um, it's like page seventy eight, and he's like, I can't believe she's marrying a reporter. I'd be much happier if she was marrying Superman, which I don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, um, he shows up. I, I read ahead. He shows up in the next issue uh, to be like, you guys didn't even invite me to your wedding, but I got you a <laughs> gift because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I I do really like that there is one superhero at the wedding for Lois's side because I guess she like knew, what's this guy's name? Alpha Centurion? Is that right? Uh, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's Alpha Centurion, yeah. Right. And... Uh, Bright side, yeah. I was like, okay, I guess I guess Lois knew, knows a superhero from somewhere. She does run with superheroes. Um, there's a scene. I think my favorite scene, actually. I know I said Batman. It's all, it's when all the weird stuff starts to come in a little bit, but it never takes over. Um, it's Mister Mixes Pitlick pops in, pretending to be Jimmy for a little while, and like you know, kind of surprises Superman for a little bit, and is like, hey, you better you better make sure everything's okay after the wedding. Ha ha, I'm still here. Bye. And, you know, there's not much point to it, but I did enjoy it. That's all. Um, yeah. Who else? I mean, yeah, that's, that's it. What else can you say about Mr. Mix to pick, to pick How do you yeah. say that? It, it's a fun know. little uh, moment because, you know, for a moment, Clark is like, you, Jimmy, you know, I'm Superman. He's like, just kidding. I'm just messing with you. Yeah, uh, that was cute. And then J- the real Jimmy comes in and is like, hey, has somebody been smoking here? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Superman getting high before his wedding, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have all right. So this was uh, we've been talking about the dad. We haven't really given any specific examples of him being a jerk to, to Clark. He's just like, yeah, but you never served your country, huh? He's like, God, I wish I could tell this jerk what I what I do. Um, well, I think even it isn't the... like Pa Kent being like, we don't brag about our fucking service. Um, to I think is what he says to his face. Like that's right, um, right. He's like, yeah, I was in Korea. It was terrible and stupid. Yeah. Um, but the end felt like, so at the end, it's like, oh, I wish dad could have been here or whatever. I don't think Lois actually says that, but like Lois's mom might be thinking it. I don't remember. And he shows up and it's like, oh, how nice that he showed up to the wedding because he has been the primary antagonist. It feels, it just feels very deus ex machina. It doesn't feel like anything happened to change his mind. He just changed his mind and said, okay, I'll be here. 
Yeah, we didn't mention other than the fact that he's a jerk. The reason he says he's not going to come is uh, Lois is oh, like, nobody's yeah. nobody's giving me away. I'm just going down the aisle by myself. Uh, like, you wanted to raise a boy and you did. Congratulations. And he's like, oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, like, I guess maybe you could consider that being the big moment where we get our victory over him, where Lois like shouts in his face and stands up for herself. Um, it, it, there was still like, I just needed something more of like her, him seeing clark do something good you know yeah i kind of like it like not clean though at the same time okay yeah all right all right uh like they're still going to be at odds forever that should that could be a whole book right there yeah superman um, superman's father-in-law <laughs> yeah. Lane, uh, <laughs> like instead of superman's then... friend jimmy olsen or superman's <laughs> friend I would not read that comic. I gotta <laughs> no, say, I, yeah, I would read. I would read a lot of spinoffs based on this book. I like a lot of these characters as they're written here, but and I do think that's kind of the charm of this era uh, that the the TV show and the uh, cartoon play into is. This is a good supporting cast for Superman. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and then you know we we jump right into the wedding scene, which you know it's very beautiful. It's very nice. It's it's unusually religious like a little a little over the top with how religious it gets but maybe that's just me <laughs> i mean it's not like they're you know it's not like they're doing a mass it's not it's but not i mean they do they, they they talk about like god's spirit which confuses me in this world like where they, they have all these like superheroes the idea of like a omnipotent god all, like uh, the christian god doesn't seem to like factor into their world and their decisions. So when it does, it seems weird. Yeah, to me. it's very, it's weird. It's weird. Plus, he's uh, not from Earth, so that's also like I don't know. It's, it's I a lot mean, of I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I think most characters in fiction don't wear their religion on their sleeve as much, or you don't see them yeah. doing their like daily routines of prayer right. and going to church. So it doesn't seem as like common as it does like in real life. Like I, you know, they don't, they don't. Mm. Fiction works don't spend time a lot of time with showing their characters praying before dinner yeah um, yeah like i'm thinking right, like right. i know you know daredevil's catholic huntress is catholic because she's italian yeah uh i know like jewish characters right. like kitty pride because she which she wears the uh, uh star of david uh necklace but it's like beyond that i guess uh a handful of others where you're like oh i know what their religion is but you're right for the most part they're kind I of know religious spain is will spain is i think presbyterian whatever scottish uh christianity mm-hmm. people do but yeah, most characters, unless that's a thing they are, aren't you know chatty about it. So it is interesting. I mean, I guess you know Superman can do whatever he wants. He he's probably Episcopalian. He seems like the type. <laughs> Just um, though, like yeah, so- oh, whatever, everything's fine. It's you know, it's basically Christianity. We're nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and overall, at the end of the day, I even though I I found lots of little things that were a little off about this book i still really liked it i think it's like a great just overall way to do if if you wanted to pack everything in one issue it could have gone a lot worse than this that's and, you know. and, and i think like if i had been an audience member purchasing a wedding comic because this is like a monumental comic this is the one that kind of like drives people to stores mm-hmm. where they pick it up from a grocery store so it probably has like four to five times num- uh, printing of a normal Superman issue. I think yeah. it brings the audience up to speed on like where it is in the continuity pretty well. It tells a pretty solid yeah. story. Um, it's a little mundane, but I like the mundaneness of it and that it's wrapped yeah. up all in the, all in, all in one issue. It, it, there's details, yeah. as you said, that are kind of like, man, I wouldn't have done that. But I think overall it's a pretty solid, like monumental mm-hmm. issue. If you were to have one. Yeah. So, so now to ask the the important questions. Uh, so they're but you know now they're married. The next issue is their honeymoon, where uh, we do see Superman shirtless on the lanai after uh, you know presumably having sex with Lois. Uh, had they ever had sex before? The do you think? That's a great mm, question. Great I don't question. know, they're... and I honestly don't even know if they did on Lois and Clark. I feel like they did. That show was pretty horny, um, but maybe not. I don't it's, know. Well, I want to know. Okay, so to go back to Lois and Clark for a second, there we we didn't talk about how Superman accidentally ended up marrying the clone. So so Lois yeah. So, so so at the end, so they were ramping up for their third season finale to have them get married. Um, and DC's like, we need a little more time. So this issue got published in October. So the the wedding got delayed to, like I would say October. Is what they said. So like the third or fourth episode of uh, Lois and Clark of season four. But so the last five episodes of season three are not a wedding. It's just it's revealed that they do get married 
But at the last second, it's revealed that Lois is actually a clone. And Kia, me and you were talking about this off air. Yeah. And you jogged my memory of Lois eating a frog. Because that's what clones yeah. did in the Lois and Clark universe is they ate frogs. Right. They Fred, ate frogs. Fred Willard was also the president of the U.S. on that show. And that's how I was introduced to Fred Willard. Um, <laughs> And so my baseline is just like because they wanted the president to act silly because he was a clone. Um, and so my baseline, though, for Fred Willard is he's serious and then he acts silly, not that he is silly and then acts serious for the and first act. And acts serious. Uh, that's so I mean, that clone. is kind of like Fred Willard's entire persona is like pretending mm-hmm. to be like a straight laced reporter or something like right. that and then be very goofy. Mm-hmm. But uh, that right. one was silly Here's my because they, they got to their honeymoon and, Lo- and Lois was like. Oh, I'm married to Superman. The clone was suddenly re- re- realized that, like on her on their wedding night or on their honeymoon, and so Clone Lois was evil and got really excited about that. Um, so, yeah. So, well, you know, sometimes... so do I guess my follow up yeah. question though is whether they whether they had uh, slept together before is do you think Superman being depowered was like a deliberate choice to oh, so like they an- could. yeah to answer like can Superman <sighs> even have sex with Lois? It's um... actually, uh, uh, that could be it. That's a long game. I, my, I feel like that's a long game. Question. I don't feel like it's a long game. Because because like Hyperion in Squadron Supreme is like I'm a I have uh you know we can never have children uh I can never have sex with you so this is not going to work. Uh, so he's kind of the '80s Superman equivalent, uh, and it's just like this will never work because I'm too strong, and it's based on that. You know, that like, con- that concept has ling- been around since um. The uh, Siegel and Schuster loved this book called Gladiator by Philip Wiley, which is about a superhero. It's written in the early 30s. Um, it's a pretty good pulpy novel. But even that hero in the 1930s was like, I've wrecked several women um, <laughs> by this. Wow. So like, like I had to have been in the back of the mind, you know, even back in the Siegel and Schuster days. So um, I can't believe people have been horny since the 30s. Yeah. Wow. No, no, yeah. Um, next before the 1930s, though, that was that was when it started. <laughs> Yeah. My big question is in the Lois and Clark show, how, Superman with his super sentence, how, how can you not smell those froggy lips? Like, that's all I want to know. You got to know you're kissing those frog lips, right? It's weird. It's weird to me. All right. Yeah, uh, it was <laughs> anti French sentiment on the show. They, they, Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get what you're going there. Uh, yeah. So, so they finally did get married um, the same week that this comic was published. The episode was called "Swear to God, We're Not Kidding This Time." Um, that was the title of the episode. Wow. Um, and and, and just like in uh, the comics, uh, Terry Hatcher, great Superman, sucks. I I I, I really like Dean liked Kane. Dean Kane, Clark Kent. I know Dean Kane outside of Clark Kent is is his own thing, um, and yeah. outside of his dog movies is his own thing. But he was my Clark Kent, yeah. and I, I like how he looks as Clark. Um, he, he does look good in, in the costume. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was really weird, though, looking watching this episode, because the first I haven't seen the, uh, Lois and Clark since I was, like, 10 or 12. Um, and it's weird, because I always viewed them as so much older than me, and now I was, like, looking at them, like, they, they were all, like, 31, 32, even in, like, season four when they got married. So they're all babies. Um, they're much younger than this. Aw, little baby. They're very cute yeah. now. Yeah, when Terry Hatcher was on MacGyver and Star Trek, she was like 20. Yeah. <laughs> she was very young back then. Mm-hmm. She was a Bond girl, yeah. I think, when she was 33. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, Lo- but... Um, yeah. Go ahead. I like I, the I don't issue. Um, the Lois and Clark yeah. episode yeah. was kind of mundane as well. Um, not really much action. They just kind of ended on a happy note. No villains, like, threatening them at the end, like, for a cliffhanger. No dudes yeah. in chains. And I actually... Yeah. I- I liked the I read the honeymoon issues of uh, which the next three issues of Action Comics, Man of Steel. And uh, I think it wasn't untitled Superman. It was like uh, Adventure Comics, something like that. Adventures of Superman. Um, it's they go on. A, they go to Hawaii. Uh, Superboy fights a villain like a Hawaiian uh, golem character for, for no reason. Uh, but then <laughs> Superman uh, gets kidnapped by the brother of the, this terrorist from the beginning of this issue. And Lois has to save him. So it's a, it's a cute little uh, three part thing that uh, is once again like Lois doing all the work and Superman basically he does do one cool thing. Um, he. Uh, they're like, oh, we can tell you're exerting yourself and trying to escape because we've got monitors hooked up to you. And then he remembers he has like some kind of training exercises that allow him to to basically, you know, lower his heartbeat so much that they think he's having like a heart attack. And then he beats <laughs> them up. Good job. Good job. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, all right, so we're moving on to Squadron Supreme. We're on number 11. We're getting really, really close to the end here now. Last two issues. Um, and, yeah, of course, the next one next week is going to be a supersized final issue of the miniseries. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a bit. But, um, yeah, this one kind of starts off a little bit slower. We're doing, like, a big combat training session. So in the last issue, a couple of the secret villains infiltrated the team, right? We had Moonglow uh, and Redstone, who joined the team. And I guess oh, in the course of the last month, we've had, let's see, I wrote down, there's a lot of characters in this, and they're all flying around. Uh, we've got Inertia. What's Inertia's power? Probably Inertia. Okay, cool. <laughs> we have Haywire, whose power is just, like, makes a bunch of annoying, like, wires? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Or, like, tangle stuff? Mm-hmm. Very weird. Yeah, so, somebody let that guy behind my TV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we have Thermite, who, who I really like. He reminds me of an icy hot chill stick. Do you remember those commercials? Are those oh, the yeah. thing? Yeah, he's got two. He's got like he's got heat powers and he's got ice powers. Like he's got both. Who? Ne- Why didn't anyone think of this before? Give him both he, powers. Yeah, he was two Mega Man characters that have then fused to fight Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, we have like I, there's a few other folks here. Lamprey's there. Blue Eagles there. Shape. There was a nice moment where Redstone throws Shape and it's like a fastball special kind of deal, and Shape looks like a missile. I love Shape. <laughs> um, we uh, yeah, I don't know. Everyone's fighting. It's not important. Wizard shows up at the end to say, hey, everybody, spruce yourselves up. There's going to be a press conference where you're all joining the team. And um, so they're about to do that. Hyperion, I don't, okay, I don't, I feel like Hyperion is blind now. The worst thing to have him do is, like, desk work at a computer. That doesn't seem right. He, he does have these glasses that are helping him see, but I don't understand how those are helping him with the computer screen. It seems off to me. I don't know. <laughs> it um, was a weird choice. How, it was a weird choice. Power Princess uh, Zarda is also like having a lot of moments of like, oh, we've lost so many people recently. We were doing so well for a while, and now like, look at all these people that have died. Um, and he's like, hey, it's okay. We're doing well. Um, yeah, this is part of the of- victory lap where I think you have to start like reflecting on like everything that's happened. You'll notice there's like a lot of like editorial notes like this happened in issue four, this happened in issue seven, this happened in issue eight. Yeah, to kind of just like say like we're culminating to something. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, we have so that the new villains are officially being inducted into the team. They all have thought bubbles about having like, oh, I feel so dirty doing this. I hope my mom's not watching. Uh, and Nighthawk and his team are watching on TV. So he's still got Mink, Pin- Pinball, Remnant and Archer who the squadron would recognize. And so they can't join the team. So instead, they're just like watching and hanging out at the base and getting all antsy. Uh, Nighthawk and Mink have a little romantic moment here. Now Nighthawk is cavorting with criminals. Oh my goodness! And like yeah. making out with them too. Yeah. What now, are you doing? Now this Nighthawk? book is getting horny too. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm. Mink is like I, you know, I turned to a life of crime because I love the excitement. But now that I have like a real cause, um, I feel even better. So she's kind of going through the thunderbolts, you know, transformation of like I actually mm-hmm. like being, you know, fighting. For good things, uh, but also she's yeah. still like, you know, she's the Catwoman, I guess, type. She's constantly flirtatious and everything. And he's like, oh, maybe, maybe if she's not a criminal, I don't know. She probably is like a direct, like a mink. I never really thought about it. It does seem like the it would be the direct Catwoman kind of analog. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, and um, Batman's the, there with President Batman. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or or like Minerva Mink, the Animaniacs character that was too sexy to be on Fox Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the deal with her? Wow. <laughs> yeah, she's in like one or two cartoons and they're like, can we not do this anymore? <laughs> yeah. I feel like we've been reading more and more horny books recently. Or, or, or the book's just getting hornier. Are we just getting hornier? All right, let's keep going. We're, we're, um, we're 11 months into quarantine. Yeah, don't investigate <laughs> what else is going on in society. <laughs> it's also Valentine's Day. That's why this is happening, right? Oh, it's our Valentine's Day episode. Oh, we're coming up on it. We're coming up on it, yeah. Um, all right, so what else? We've got um, – so Moonglow, uh, one of these five – a uh, villain who's now joined the squadron now has access to the computers. This is and fucking sh- stupid that a yeah. hero gets 100% access. Like, I don't think, like, in the military, like, you swear your oath or whatever. I'm not sure I'm not military. Like, not everybody's given 100% access to everything at that point. There's still, <laughs> no. like, a hierarchy. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. But not not the squadron. They're all about being equals or yeah, something. I, yes. Yeah, like, imagine if Golden Archer didn't have access to the... the 
brain machine in the first place. (laughs) Well, so she sneaks in and she is transmitting the information on the behavior modification machine to Master Menace. And at one point, Apex comes in, but she uses her like reality perception altering stuff to not reality altering perception altering to like hide herself from Apex. Um, But then later, Aida sees that like, hey, someone who's transmitted the plans to an untraceable location, uh, Apex. I thought you should know. And Apex like sees what happened on the monitor. And she goes, How's that? that's not possible. Okay, well, I have to speak up about it because I'm loyal to the squadron, but I can't speak out against this squadron member because I'm not allowed to do that. And she's dealing with this, like, uh, uh, oh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I just had it to right before you said that. Like, It's a logical paradox. Yeah, quandary, paradox. paradox. That's what, yeah. yeah, that's what breaks uh, where, robots' brains in uh, on uh, Star Trek. You just got to make them. Yes. I would probably yeah. say she should be. I that's mean, one again, we said that this was the problem with the behavioral modification machine is it's a monkey's paw situation where you're saying specific words that can then be interpreted or misinterpreted certain ways. You mm-hmm. probably should have said loyal to, to the squadron, a not squadron members. <laughs> but yeah, turned out to be a real monkey's brain situation, yeah. eh? Um, but <laughs> more um, like an ape. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's also rebuilding Tom Thumb as a robot. She is. She is. I want to know when this thing is going to come into play. Um, yeah, we got one issue left. <laughs> I don't know. We got one issue left. It's got to be the next one. Um, but she is like she's basically brain dead now. She can't go. But she's going back and forth between the two options, and it drives her insane. And like I think a Power Princess and Hyperion find her, and they're like, all right, let's go get her some help. Um, Aida does not say anything to them because she's a computer and she's like, wow, well, giving uh, Apex this information like destroyed her brain. I shouldn't say anything about this anymore, <laughs> and, which is a little off with its logic to me, but I'm, I'm okay with it. That's yeah, funny. it's also like, I don't exactly know why this happened, so I don't want to risk that it'll happen again. <laughs> right, right. Um, we get, okay, so back to President Nighthawk, former President Nighthawk and his crew. He gets a call from Master Menace who is is like, hey, I'm done. I've built the machine. He was so excited to get those plans and start building. And he's like, what? Like, what's this Tom Thumb talking about? It's going to be so easy to reverse engineer. It's all right. Here we go. Um, And he says, bring me a member. We'll unbrainwash them. Um, And President Nighthawk is like, hey, are you sure it works? And Master Minute says, yeah, I just just unbrainwashed a few old convicts. And they're out there committing felonies right now. And Nighthawk says, that's excellent. (laughs) (laughs) He's so excited. Oh man! You're committing I'm like, crimes yeah. right now, not crimes. It's just such a funny word choice. Felonies. Yeah, Felonies. yeah. I hope. I hope it's just like Grand Theft Auto. It's not like serious stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, we yeah, get uh, John Wayne Gacy. Uh, I you know I just uh, <laughs> unbrainwashed him. He's out again. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's committing felonies um, right now. Right, B- now. Buffalo Bill is uh, is on the loose again. He's he's <laughs> feeling much better. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, so uh, so as we start to get into the end of this issue, we're we're gonna be trying to unbrainwash these villains. Uh, we have Wizard, Lamprey, and Haywire. They're all like doing some safety uh, check thing at one of these plants, and Wizard is like, "Hey, I'm gonna run ahead, check on my family." Lamprey and Haywire. Haywire says, hey, I know this great bar on the other side of town. Want to come with me, Lamprey? And Lamprey's like, yeah, sure. And they, he like takes him to this villain secret hideout where they have the machine and they put him in the machine and he's like, ah, I'm evil again. Yeah. <laughs> and and Nighthawk says, cool, you want to join my renegade team? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Very yeah, I, I do like it because Nighthawk is like, look, man, I'm not going to make you, but you know, like the, the squadron catches you, they're going to brainwash you again. And he's like, yeah, let's team up. Yeah. <laughs> I really um, like it. Then, it. It feels like like a video game or like a board game when you're taking all of your enemies um, like pieces mm-hmm, and adding mm-hmm, them to your yeah. team. It's really it feels good. Um, they also so they bring shape in a thermite has encased him in a big old block of ice and he's frozen. And they're like, all right, thaw his head out. We'll just put that under the machine. <laughs> this is the saddest scene. He's like, he doesn't want to do it. Oh, I hated it. I hated seeing it. Um, right as they're about to brainwash him, Blue Eagle shows up. He was like with Shape and whoever else brought him in. And he was like dealing with, you know, criminals or whatever. I don't know. But he followed them. And they're like, oh, well, shit. Now what do we do? We got Blue Eagle here. Oh, no. And they're like, well, we got to kill him. And Nighthawk says, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, well, we got to brainwash him. 
And then he says, no, you can't do that. And so he's got to choose the lesser of two evils. And so he says, all right, fine, brainwash him, but just make him forget us rather than changing his mind. And, like, the end of this issue is Nighthawk really realizing how far he's fallen. And, like, he's literally in a room filled with these villains that he has teamed up with. And he is brainwashing someone using the B-Mod machine. It's, oh, what an ending. Yeah. It's good. And, uh, so I don't know how we're going to wrap all this up in the next issue, but I presume it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> we are planning all right now on going on to the one shot that happened a few years later. We'll have to look up some, some of the specifics about that, but I think it was, yeah, next, I think it was 89, next, 89. Okay. And it so, was, it was drawn yeah, by the good time, Paul Ryan. So, but we can talk about that. after <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, next time we'll be reading squadron Supreme number 12, which finishes out the mini series. The one after that, will go on to squadron Supreme death of a universe, which is sort of an epilogue kind of deal a few years later. Um, and also what's our main read next time. I have not kept up with WandaVision, uh, Vince and Chris, you both have, yes. and there's, I, I guess this is maybe some spoilers, not necessarily. I, I wouldn't even call this spoilers, but Monica Rambeau shows up, uh, a Captain Marvel character, uh, you know, this, uh, yeah, this shows a me Captain a bit Marvel. about um, incorporating a Captain Marvel. Thing. Yeah. She, yeah. Monica, Monica was, uh, Captain Marvel's girlfriend's daughter in the movie. Um, Maria Rambo was her mom. Um, and mm-hmm. so uh, Monica is now grown up in the present day um, and she shows up in WandaVision. So um, I there's a few other things that show up in WandaVision. I gave my wife like, what do you want to know more about? Because like there's a lot of things, including our boy Jimmy Woo um, is also in that episode of WandaVision. Jimmy Woo. Um, so and we're going to cover Agents of Atlas someday. Um, but so eventually one day, but I figured I wanted to cover some Marie, uh, Monica Rambo cause I don't honestly know much about her. I know she's been in some Avengers books we've covered and I know she's been in next wave, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. We, we, we did the yeah. under siege uh, Avengers versus the masters of evil. She's in that. Okay. And then we've done next wave. I think are the only two things yeah, that I could think yeah. of that she was she in. Although she's been, in I feel like War she showed me. up and yeah, yeah. She doesn't she doesn't do uh, much, but there's a couple issues. We're going to cover her first appearance, which was created by, uh, I guess, Romita Jr. And uh, and um, Roger Stern in Roger. Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16. And then she I got think, a, I had it written down as as not Romita Jr. as just Romita. Am I wrong? I, I don't know. We'll, we'll double check. I this. thought Romita Jr. was on the book with Stern around. That yeah, time. I was going to say that was the regular art team writer okay, and art okay, team at the got time. Got so it. it's probably them. Yeah, and I know, no, Chris, you've said um, that that's like your favorite year of Spider-Man comics, so. It, it is. Uh, I, I, I think right. I've read this issue, but I don't remember. I usually don't read annuals because they're usually bad. But, they are usually bad, but, but we're doing it anyway. She was she it's was a Captain a, Marvel before Genus Vell, also known as Photon. Um, you may mm-hmm. rec- know her as that. And then there's a Captain Marvel issue from 1989, just a one-shot. It's double-sized, where she does some stuff in New Orleans, written by Dwayne McDuffie. And art by Doc somebody. Uh, Mark Bright is what I wrote down, but apparently the credit is Doc Bright. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know that we've covered them before. So, yeah, a couple of one-shot uh, issues that might be a little bit bigger, a uh, double-sized, you know, annual and a, and a one-shot uh, to go along with Captain – I'm sorry, Squadron Supreme number 12, which will also be double-sized. So, so three total issues that we're reading for the next show. Um, again, that's I, Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16 from 82 and Captain Marvel number 1 from 89. Yeah, and, and we're covering this now because WandaVision just happened, and I'm like, I want to know some more about Monica Rambeau. And, you know, two mm-hmm, episodes mm-hmm. from now, it may be, like, do you want to know about, pff, I don't know, Captain Britain uh, may show up. I have no idea. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Britain, this guy. <laughs> well, maybe. We we'll we'll reach next caliber at some point. <laughs> yeah, we never have. Um, all right. So uh, what else is going on? Uh, Chris, what y'all doing for the podcast these days? Uh, well, our most recent episode uh, came out, I believe, this past week. Uh, it's it's a fun one. It's called Nemesis. It's a 1990s uh, kind of Terminator c- cyborg type movie about a c- uh, ex cyborg cop. Now that I'm describing it, there's also some Blade Runner in there uh, who is trying to track down terrorists and then finds out that the cops are the real terrorists and cyborgs. And it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of uh, robots shooting each other and having robot battle damage. And there's, uh, what, I think three or four different female characters with boy names. So it's very androgynous if you like cyberpunk stuff. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh, Vince, how about you? Anything happen? Nothing happening. Nothing happening. Nothing happening. 
Cool. <laughs> surviving and thriving. Um, uh, surviving and thriving. That's all we can do. Um, you know, I've been having fun with the, the streaming stuff still. Uh, I'm on Twitch. Uh, Kiarash. That's three R's in the middle. K-A-R-R-R-A-S-H. Uh, somebody, uh, a friend of the show, uh, someone named Faded Bane popped into my Twitch the other day. So thanks for popping in there. It's always nice to hear from folks. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Hades recently. Uh, not as much Mario. You know, it's amazing how tired you get of games when you're playing them on stream for people on a regular basis. Uh, it's amazing but, uh, to me. Like, like every now and then, like I, I watch some streamers of my son and I'm like, man, it's gotta be really hard to get like that excited about the same game playing it 10 hours a day. Um, so, right. so kudos to those like Minecraft really, streamers that he watches that yeah. like stay enthusiastic and find new cool things to do because it is a tough job. Well, I think that's the I think that's what makes the job easier is to play what you like and yeah. to make sure you keep aging it up if you're not liking something. So, like right now, I'm doing a lot of Hades runs. I'm super in love with that game. Uh, continuing yeah, I, through Ori and uh, are, are wrestling. Are you? I, I guess oh, this Ori. isn't the the right time. An hour and fifteen minutes into the podcast, are you into <laughs> the epilogue yet of Hades? Um, I don't know if I'd call it the epilogue. Like I've escaped Hades a few times and I'm like learning more about it. I've escaped four times now. So I think there's okay. a certain I don't know t- number that... of time that once you've escaped a certain past a certain amount of times, then it flips something. Yeah, I believe it's ten. Okay. So you're not quite to that part yet. Wow. I'm almost like it... I'm almost to the end of the epilogue where I, I don't want to spoil it, but I've almost done the thing I need to do to make everything okay as far as the character. <laughs> I, I'm trying not to spoil it for people that haven't played no, no, the that's game. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm 24 runs in, and I'm still seeing new stuff every time, which is just nuts to me. Oh, yeah, uh, you're going to see new stuff for a long time <laughs> to come. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, I do occasionally get dialogue that I'm like, well, that should have happened a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that's yeah. that's what happens, I guess, when you beat the game too early and there's too much, like, uh, plot and <laughs> dialogue that they have to yeah. give and not character flavor text. That makes sense. Um, yeah, but the other game I've really been enjoying is Wrestling Empire. Wednesdays is my wrestling day, and I play that afterwards. It's this really jank game made by one person. It's just the most broken mess, but it's so much fun. It's just like the fun of wrestling distilled down to to craziness. So, uh, you know, I, if we got any wrestling I watched fans, part, pop I watched part of your stream, and I could not tell what was going on. It, made <laughs> it, no was, sense to me. it was ridiculous. It was nuts. Uh, but, yeah, that's it. I have, I'm having fun playing video games, and... Um, and reading comics and watching wrestling. That's all we do. <laughs> it's, it's that nerd trifecta, right? Video games, comics, and, and wrestling. What else is there? What else is there? <laughs> um, Vince, I love you. Love you, too. Chris, love you. I uh, Sorry, my brain uh, was recently changed. I can't say that. <laughs> oh, damn it. But he was, we were so close. Who changed his brain? Do we have a rival podcast who's stolen Chris <laughs> from us and where he's been in, infiltrated with us? Gosh, that'd be terrible. All right. But anyways, uh, listeners, thank you so much as well. We love you. Uh, hey, drop us a line. What, what would be the best way for people to drop us a line if they want to just say hey? Um, <laughs> we had an email account, really... but I don't know the password to it anymore. <laughs> honestly like we just kind of record this every other week we hang out with friends how about our website can they comment there yeah all my friends are right here.com you can comment on the post we make a post for every episode kia does some cool art for every single one usually our panel of the week all my friends are right here.com that's one word or you can go to our youtube channel all my friends are right here um every episode is posted there as well i know some of y'all listen to it there because we got 11 listens for um, our last episode, which is actually the, the YouTube channel doesn't get much um, traction, but <laughs> but you know what? It shows up in Google results. Um, but yeah, you there can comment you there. That's actually, the pers- one person commented there and said, you should do Crisis, and that's why we did Crisis on Infinite Earths, was because of that comment. So Well, there you go. Um, you want us to read something, let us know, and we'll probably do it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, uh, everybody, again, thanks so much. Uh, this, I, I, wait a minute. We didn't actually do a panel of the week. Pow! It's, do we have to? We don't have to. If, it, if, okay. if the issue doesn't merit it, we don't do it. Right. If the issue didn't merit it, it never came. The panel of the week is Nighthawk being excited about uh, uh, felonies. That's our panel <laughs> of the week. Um, all right. For real, good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.